Hey guys, I'm back um, for book time. I hope you were sure to clean up all your mess after small group time before watching this video. If you haven't, go clean it up first. Okay, since we were focusing on monsters, like the one that we read about in the book Abby Yo Yo yesterday, and then we ended up making a monster protector, I thought that we could read a Skippy John Jones book where he encounters a different kind of monster. What kind of monster do you think he encounters? Our title is Skippy John Jones in Mummy Trouble by Judy Schachner. In Mummy Trouble, looking at the front cover of our book, what can you predict that our book will be about? Remember, a prediction is a guess. So what do you guess or predict that this book will be about. Hmm. Let's get started. Skippy John Jones and Mummy Trouble by Judy Schachner. Here's the second picture. Oh, I see what you see. You think maybe he's going to encounter some mummies, some mummy monsters? Let's see. Skippy John Jones did his very best thinking outside the box. And this twisted Mama's whiskers tighter than a Texas tornado. Hey you, Mr. McPoo, said Mama Junebug Jones. Just what do you think you're doing? McPoo didn't say boo. He was too busy reading. Uh-oh. Mama Junebug Jones does not look happy. <gasps> Would you be happy if you saw if you saw your kids making all this mess? I wouldn't. Hey, little digger, I'm talking to you, said Mama, scooping up her boy. A pyramid outside the litter box will never ever do. Then she saw his magazine. Uh-oh. So that's what he was doing. He would use all the kitty litter from inside his box to make a pyramid. National Leographic, mused Mama, and the curse of the cat mummy. Why, this will give you nightmares, boy, with an upset tummy, too, plus a puffy tail on the grandest scale. This story is taboo. Uh-oh. Look at her face. Looks like her face is scrunched up like this, kind of like the face that you make when you're angry. Uh oh. Looks like he was reading a book about the curse of the cat mummy, and his mom is afraid that now he might have nightmares. But Skippy John Jones was in no mood to listen to his mama, so he skedaddled into his room. Uh oh, he didn't feel like listening to his mom. For a really good bounce on his big boy bed, he bounced once, he bounced twice, and the third time he bounced, he said, Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones, and I do love my mummy, but if I don't bounce, I get knots in my tummy. Hey, mummy, tummy, those rhyme. Then the kitty boy flipped over to the mirror for a look-see. What do you think he's looking in the mirror for? Holy smokito, exclaimed Skippy John Jones. I know you, he said to the doggy in the mirror. Your ears are too big for your head. Your head is too big for your body. You are not a Siamese cat. Then, using his very best Spanish accent, he added, You are still the big chihuahua, dude. The whole enchilada. Do you remember this from the last book that we read? Every time he looks in that mirror, he sees a chihuahua. And then he starts speaking in Spanish. And they just might like enchiladas in Egypt, thought Skippy. So the kitty boy donned his mask, on his cape and began to sing in a muy soft voice. 
My name is Skipito Frisquito, and I'm off to see old Egipiquito. My chicos insist, and I dare not resist the chance to go meet a mamito. Uh oh. I remember in the last book he said something similar, and then next thing I knew he was off on an adventure. What do you think is gonna happen next? In the meantime, his little sisters Jezebel, Jillyboo, and Jujubee rolled into his room with a plan of their own. No, a plan of their own. But the kitty boy was already deep inside his closet on his way to ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt. And he got there by going into his closet and piling down the River Nile who should sail right past but a kooky crocodile hunkered down on his lumpy, bumpy back where all his old amigos, the chimichangos, pack. Adonde vas? called out Skipito. We are going to the undermundo, answered the chihuahuas. Not to the underwear, exclaimed Skipito. Underwear? No, 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 said the puchitos, you silly little beast. To the underworld, where mamitos rest in peace. Peace, exclaimed Skipito. Who wants to sleep in peace? We do, said the doggies. We hear they are to die for. Do you think he actually meant where they rest in peace? Like in the vegetable peas? Or rest in peace. You mean they are better than the frijoles? asked Skipito. Si, sí, mucho mejor, señor, said Poquito Tito. Vámonos, said Skipito. What are we waiting for? But then Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones, spoke up. Hold your ponies, Pepito. To get to the undermundo, we first have to answer the riddle of the finks. The riddle of the finks. Interesting. See what that is. But I'm not good at riddles, said Skipito. No problema, said Poquito Tito. You have a muy big brain. Then they set forth from the Rio Nile to find the Finks. The muchachos began to sing. Skippy, Skipu, Skipito. We only have one chancerito. To pass by the Finks, so don't be a jinx. Just answer the riddle damdito. Looks like they're ready to go. They only have one chance to get in, so they need to make sure to solve the riddle. The muchachos arrived at four o'clock sharp, but the finks had been waiting forever. Don't let the gato get your tongue, dude, said Don Diego. What cat? Where? asked Skipito. That cat there, said the perritos, pointing to the finks. But before he could say anything, the great finks spoke. Whose ears are too big for his head? And who loves to bounce on his bed? Who creeps on all fours through his own closet door straight into the land of the dead? Hmm. Who do you think it is? Can you help me solve the riddle? The Fink said, Whose ears are too big for his head? Yeah, that's what they said about Skippy John Jones, right? Let's just make sure that it could be him. And who loves to bounce on his bed? Does Skippy John Jones like to bounce on his bed? Yeah, so we're even closer. Maybe it is him. But let's just make sure. Who creeps on all fours? Does he use his four legs to creep around? Yes! And he goes through his own closet door. I think you all are right. He is talking about Skippy John Jones. Skippy knew the answer to this riddle, but he was so nervous he coughed up a little fur ball. Aww. You call that an answer, dude? said Don Diego. The answer, bellowed the Finks. So with this permission, the perritos were free to pass on to the tomb of King Rootin Tootin Kitten Kabootin. Oh my gosh, that's a crazy name. Do you think you could say that? King Rootin' Tootin' Kitten Kabootin'. 
When they finally reach the pyramid, the doggies burst into song and dance. Oh, see, oh, say, Osiris. Our boy has a touch of the virus. He coughed up a ball, so the Finks made a call, and now it's inscribed on papyrus. But when Skipito saw how dark it looked in the pyramid, he began to feel queasy. Mm, my tummy hurts, he groaned. And my tail is getting puffy, too. Oh, no. It's like he's feeling scared. And he said, he now he feels queasy, his tummy hurts, and his tail is getting puffy. When you're scared, what happens to your body? But his chicos would not comfort him. They just wanted their peace, por favor. Are you not El Skipito Frisquito, the great sword fighter? asked Poquito Tito. Si, declared Skipito, that is me. Then do your duty, dog, commanded Don Diego. Mm -mm. They didn't even comfort him at all. He said, aren't you supposed to be the great sword fighter, El Skipito Frisquito? And he is, so now he has to put on a brave face, I guess. So Skipito drew in a deep breath and dove into the darkness of the musty old tomb, chanting, Peace, por favor, peace, por favor, peace, por favor. Woo, look at him scurrying through there. If I was in a dark place like that, I would probably scurry through there quickly, too. He, rocked through, he rocketed through the vault like a fur-covered comet. Until suddenly, Smaquito, Skipito hit a wall and knocked himself out cold. Uh -oh. oh. That's why I always say not to run, right? He was running and running and then he smacked himself right into a wall. Soon after, three goddesses emerged from the shadows to prepare the kitty boy for his journey to the Undermundo. First we salt and pepper him, said Ba, the first goddess, and sprinkle him with lucky charms, said Da, the second one. Then we wrap him and roll him and bundle him tight, said Bing, the third goddess, and blow him a kiss and say, nighty night. Look at this, the three goddesses. Ba, Da, and Bing. Did you see what they did to him? They salt and peppered him, they sprinkled him with Lucky Charms, and then they wrapped him all up so that he was ready for the Undermundo, for the Underworld. Then the trio rolled the wrapped cat down the ramp into the king's burial chamber. Across the room stood the 4,000-year-old sarcophagus of King Rootin'Toot and Kitten Kabootin'. Sarcophagus? It said that King Rutentoon was inside the sarcophagus, so maybe it's this thing. Because it looks like the perfect shape for someone to be inside. This is what a sarcophagus is. And just as they were about to deliver El Skipito Mamito, he rolled right into the feet of the oldy moldy mummy. Bada bing! moaned the king as he stretched out his paws. We need to rest in peace. Peas, screamed El Skipito Mamito, walking up in a flash. No, waking up in a flash. There they are, rolling him in. And then he went and bumped right into the oldy moldy mummy. And quicker than you can say mummies, mumps, and measles, he grabbed two paws full of peas and high-tailed at home. They really were peas, like the vegetable. Look, they're right there. Did you hear what he said? Quicker than you can say mummies, mumps, and measles, he grabbed two fistfuls of peas and ran off. When Los Chimichango saw the Skipito Mamito come rolling out of the pyramid, they went into a real tailspin. Then all the doggies began to chant, Green Chicharos Hot. Green chicharos, cold. The best chicharos in the world are those that Skipito holds. Green chicharos. I think that means green peas. 
It looks like they really want them. They're going crazy. But El Skipito Mamito was too scared to slow down, so he chucked the peas at his chicos and kept right on running. Look, he's so scared. He just threw the peas at them and took off. Straight into the arms of his mummy. What's the matter, Fuzzy Bug? asked Mama Junebug Jones. Skippy John Jones looked back over his shoulder to see if the three spirits were still chasing him. Bada bing, he wailed, dropping the last of the peas. Then, three giggling goddesses raced into the room after Skippy fell with their puppets and a roll of toilet paper. We're going to wrap you and roll you and bundle you tight, they sang, and check you for cooties, then kiss you goodnight. Here, now he's with his mummy, and he looks like he feels better now. Look at that, and his three little sisters are chasing him around with toilet paper wrapped around them. That night, Skippy John Jones was bouncing on his big boy bed. No mummies in my closet, no mummies in my bed, no mummies in my bookcase, no mummies in my head. Just before he closed his eyes, the kitty boy checked his room one more time for mummies. The only one he saw was his own. I love you, mummy, said Skippy John Jones. I love you too, bunny boots, said Mama Junebug. Now go to sleep, por favor. Here he is. All the mummies are gone and he can sleep soundly. And that is the last page of our book. Here's the blank page at the end. And here is what is on our back cover. It's like he's exhausted. I hope you enjoyed Skippy John Jones in Mummy Trouble and that maybe you helped Skippy John Jones get away by using your monster protector at home. I think that since we have been talking about different types of monsters today, like the giant Ibiyoyo, and then in this case, the mummy monster that he found in Egypt, that maybe we could clean up your rooms or help someone in your family clean up an area of the house like a monster today. It's really fun to clean up like monsters, so it shouldn't take that much time at all. I'm going to go start cleaning my house like a monster, too. I'll see you on Monday. Remember, we don't have any videos tomorrow, so I'll see you on Monday. Have a good weekend.